Coming up, let it snow. We love playing in it, but what exactly is snow? We'll explain. Then do you remember the name of your best friend's dog? Find out just how memories are made. Also ahead, we'll take you backstage to see just what it takes to put on a holiday classic. And you'll meet the kids who are stealing the show. What does it feel like to be your first Nutcracker? It's actually pretty fun. I always wanted to be in the Nutcracker, so it's, to me, it's a pretty special moment. Plus, you know Dasher, you know Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, everything you want to know about reindeer, red noses and all. The number one questions we get asked here at the farm, the first one from the kid is, uh, where's Rudolph? And giving thanks, one school teacher who is showing her students the power of gratitude. This is NBC Nightly News, Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's always great to be here, especially on a weekend morning. We have a terrific lineup ahead, including an 11-year-old artist who is using his talents to give back. Plus, we'll put you to the test in our pop quiz. But let's begin with a weather front. Heavy snow and winter storms impacting parts of the country this week. And it got us thinking, what exactly is snow and how does it form? Our friend Dylan Dreyer explains. <laughs> From snowball fights to snowmen to snow angels, they all have one thing in common, snow. But what exactly is snow? What we call snow is really millions of tiny ice crystals. Under a microscope, these crystals are beautiful and intricate, and no two are exactly alike. When it gets cold enough, water in the air that might usually come down as rain freezes. Think of it like this. When warm air rises, it cools and condenses into a cloud that could eventually produce rain, just like we're seeing water droplets develop on the outside of this glass here. Now this glass has been sitting in the freezer, so as the warm air rises and condenses, it develops into more of a frost. It's creating ice crystals instead of water droplets. And that's exactly what we see happen in a cloud. When the temperatures are below freezing, we see snowflakes form instead of raindrops. To take that a step further, the water vapor needs to condense onto something just like it did on that glass. So it finds little particles in the air, think dust or pollen or dirt. So it condenses onto that little particle in the air and then it continues to crystallize and grow until it becomes a nice big snowflake and then it falls to the ground as snow. Did you know snowflakes have six sides and every snowflake looks different? The temperature of the air determines the shape of the six-sided snowflake the most common shapes are needles, plates, dendrites, columns, and prisms. Scientists estimate as many as a septillion snowflakes fall to Earth each year. That's a one with 24 zeros after it. In the U.S., snow falls every year, in every state, even in Hawaii. Syracuse, New York is one of the snowiest cities in America, averaging 128 inches of snow each winter. America is also home to one of the snowiest single places in the world, Mount Rainier in Washington. It averages 53 feet a year. That's like a wall of snow piled as high as a five-story building. Don't worry, even if it's warm outside, there's an easy way to make your own snow at home. And you probably already have all the ingredients. Just make sure it's okay with your parents or a grown-up. All you need is baking soda, and top it off with an equal amount of shaving cream. You'll stir that together. And look at this, snow. Wanna help me make a snowball? Look at that. So no matter where you live, you can enjoy the magic of winter and the science of snow. Just be sure to bundle up, be safe, and enjoy. Dylan, thanks very much. Well, did you ever wonder how we remember things? It's a question that's been on the mind of one of our viewers. Hi, my name's Natalie. I'm from Lionsville, Pennsylvania, and I wanted to know how does the brain remember everything it's been taught? Natalie, that's a really great question, and here with the answer is our good pal, Dr. John Torres. Do you remember that incredible ice cream cone you had on vacation last summer? What about the name of your best friend's dog? Or how painful a bee sting can be? You're able to think of all these things because of your brain. Just like a computer, it can store, sort, and recall a lot of information. The way it does this is by forming memories. And here's how that works. So jingle bells and deck the halls. Let's say you've just heard a new holiday song you love and want to remember. 
Well, the first step in making that song a memory is called encoding. In this process, your new favorite jingle is changed into a form that can be stored inside your brain. From there, that catchy tune travels along the electrical pathways in your brain and goes into storage. Now, your brain has a big decision to make. Is this song going to be a short-term memory, a working memory, or a long-term memory? As it turns out, your storage for short-term memories is very small. You can only hold about seven pieces of information at a time there. And typically, short-term memories are only remembered for about 15 to 30 seconds. One example is if someone tells you their phone number. As soon as you write it down, you don't need to remember it anymore. Working memories can hang around a little bit longer. If you want to keep singing that song over and over again, you'll probably keep it in your working memory for the time being. And if you're going to whip out this jam every holiday season, to long-term memory it goes. Finally, we come to the most important step of forming a memory, remembering it. Your brain will go into its storage and pull out that song so you can sing it whenever you want. Now, if you want to make sure you remember that song for a very long time, there are a few things you can do to improve your memory. First, keep your mind sharp. Just like exercise is good for your body, it's also good for your brain. So try to learn chess, do a jigsaw puzzle, or play an instrument. All these things make your brain and memory stronger. Get a good night's rest. Getting seven to nine hours of sleep every night helps your brain strengthen memories so you can remember them more easily down the road. And then write it down. Research shows that if you're trying to learn something new, writing down that information can help reinforce it in your memory. And that's how memory works. If you want to put it to the test, belt out your favorite song. I don't want a lot, but I miss you, Jingle bell, jingle bell. Because as a famous elf once said, the best way to spread holiday cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Dr. John Torres, I won't forget. Thanks so much. Well, let's turn to the art world and one 11 year old boy who has become a breakout star. And now the young artist is using his talents to help the kids of Ukraine as their lives have been turned upside down by the invasion of their country. We get details from our friend Kathy Park. Meet Andres Valencia. Most of the time, he's your average 11 year old. I like G.I. Joe's and Pokemon cards. Except some days, his extraordinary gift in sketching and painting takes him to places like Miami, Florida, a city that just hosted a major art fair. And in a sea of art lovers, Andres made a big splash with his own collection. What do you think about all the attention that you're getting? Well, I like that people are noticing my art and that they like my art. Andres discovered painting at just five years old and says it comes to him naturally. Have you taken any art lessons before? I've never taken any art lessons. Never. Can I add to yours? We saw him in action as he created another masterpiece in minutes. What's the best way to describe your artwork? A hint of cubism, surrealism a little, and it's, um, Modigliani. Those are all different styles of art you can find in his paintings, often compared to Pablo Picasso's, considered one of the most influential artists of modern art. But Andres adds his own twist, too. One of my favorite Pokemon, his name is Venusaur, uh -huh. and this is him, but in his name is Vina Q because it's in my style. His pieces are becoming a hit among all ages. The painting prodigy is now using his talents to give back. What's the name of this painting? This one is the Ukrainian painting. Shortly after the Russian invasion in Ukraine, Andres watched the crisis unfold on the news and wanted to help. So I made this painting to make sure people don't forget what happened to Ukraine. All the money raised from the prints of this painting will help Ukrainian children through the Klitschko Foundation. One of the founders shared a message of gratitude. Your artwork is amazing. It is helping us already. And it's going to help lots of kids as well around the world. Whatever you do, just keep on going and please never stop. This fifth grader may need a step stool to reach some of his larger than life paintings. But the sky is the limit for the young artist making his mark.
Kathy, thanks so much for that. Well, time now for our pop quiz. And since Hanukkah begins on Sunday, we have one about this holiday and some presidential trivia. So here's the question. Which U.S. president was the first to officially recognize the Jewish holiday Hanukkah? Was it A, President Theodore Roosevelt, B, President Bill Clinton, or C, President Jimmy Carter? The answer coming up after the break. Just ahead, reindeer games. We'll head to one farm in Michigan for an up-close look at reindeer, just in time for Christmas. Plus, Backstage Pass, our Kids Edition correspondent will take you behind the scenes at the Nutcracker. It's minutes before showtime and I'm in the room where all the girls are getting their costumes on and doing their hair and makeup. And the power of gratitude, the inspiring way these teenagers are giving thanks this holiday season. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. Let's get the answer to our pop quiz. The question, which U.S. president was the first to officially recognize the Jewish holiday Hanukkah? Was it A, President Theodore Roosevelt, B, President Bill Clinton, or C, President Jimmy Carter? The answer, C, President Carter. Back in 1979, President Carter lit a menorah in commemoration of Hanukkah in Washington's Lafayette Park. Since then, every U.S. president has celebrated Hanukkah in some way. All right, speaking of the holidays, another special tradition is back again this year, the New York City Ballet's production of The Nutcracker. The company has performed the program nearly every year since 1954, and stealing the show are the kids. Many dancers are first-timers. Our Kids Edition correspondent, Malena, had a chance to take our cameras behind the scenes for a look at the production. At New York City's Lincoln Center, a holiday tradition is back. 126 kids from the School of American Ballet are part of New York City's Ballet's production of The Nutcracker. The story of The Nutcracker is this family on Christmas Eve who has a big Christmas party and the Uncle Drosselmeyer, who is magical, brings a special nutcracker who then becomes a prince and Marie and her prince travel to the land of the sweets where all of the dancing happens in the second act. This year, almost all of them are newcomers. Last year, in that we only had children above the age of 12 performing the children's roles in the nutcracker. Normally, it's 12 and below. So this year, all of the children um, missed their opportunity the year before and last year. So almost all of the children in this year's production are new to the Nutcracker. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Bernice. I had a chance to go backstage to see what it takes to put on a production like this. It takes a lot of people. It's minutes before showtime and I'm in the room where all the girls are getting their costumes on and doing their hair and makeup. In each show, there are 150 costumes for all the dancers on stage. What do you do here? So, my name's Norma, and um, I'm in charge of keeping all these costumes looking really nicely and getting them dry cleaned, and we fit them and put them on all the performers. And there's even a room just dedicated for all the shoes for the dancers. How many shoes are in here? That's an interesting question. I am going to guess about three to 4,000 pairs of shoes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> and it's counting all the point shoes and then all the men's shoes as well. You can touch it and you see it's made out of burlap, paste, a little bit of leather, and satin. It's very soft. We don't want we want. Backstage is filled with lots of excitement. We're here backstage where all the dancers are getting ready for act two. As you can see, all the angels are behind me. And guess what? During each show, nearly 60 people are working hard on everything from lighting to scenery. And the famous sugar plum fairy, her tutu is made of seven layers. All the kids are thrilled to be performing. It is Agatha's first time this year in the Nutcracker. She's an angel. Was this always your dream to be in the Nutcracker? Yes, especially the Nutcracker because I feel like the Nutcracker is like the funnest to be in and it's really fun. 
Could you show me one of your favorite dance moves? Um, it's called double doors, and then you go like this, and then you lift your hand, and then you put it down, and then you go back, and then back, and like, then back, and then back. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> it's also Hannon's first time in the show as Fritz. What does it feel like to be, um, to have this be your first Nutcracker? It's actually pretty fun because ever since I ever saw the Nutcracker, after that I always wanted to be in the Nutcracker, so it's, to me it's a pretty special moment. And for kids who love to dance but maybe get a little stage fright, I asked the stars for some advice. If someone had like stage fright and would want to dance, what advice would you give them? If you're on stage, try not to look at the people, the people that are watching because you'll be even more scared, so kind of just focus on what you're doing. The children are, are the life of the, of the Nutcracker, in my mind, and the story revolves around them. So it's really, it's really their personalities and their energy that makes the story of the Nutcracker come alive. My favorite part down in the Nutcracker, it feels really magical when you're on stage and when I'm like dancing. A magical holiday tradition for everyone involved, backstage and in the audience. Melina, thanks so much. That was terrific. Well, Christmas is just about a week away, and Santa and his elves are busy making final preparations to deliver all the gifts on Christmas Eve and guiding Santa's sleigh, the reindeer, of course. And it got us thinking, just what makes reindeer so special? We headed to one reindeer farm in Michigan to find out. Here's our friend Erin McLaughlin. They are gentle giants, majestic and super smart. I uh, quickly realized that reindeer are, are quite an intelligent animal. You can actually teach them things. Reindeer live in places like the northern part of North America, Europe, Asia, and of course, the Arctic tundra. They like the cold weather. If we get a 30 below wind chill here, they're in heaven. We visited the rooftop landing reindeer farm in Michigan where the Aldrich family has been raising reindeer for over 30 years. Hey buddy. So it's almost like having a big dog. Kids are quite surprised at how gentle they are. I mean, you can go up and pet them on the nose and, and you can feed them. Reindeer are a species of deer, a cousin to a caribou, but smaller in size. The average female weighs about 200 to 225 pounds. The average male weighs about 300 to 350 pounds. I thought they would be like this tall compared to me. I'm like, oh, they're actually compared to me a little bit. A 12 pound reindeer calf born in April can weigh 125 pounds by Christmas. And what about their antlers? All reindeer have antlers, uh, the males and the females. And they're actually, their antlers start growing after they're about a week old. They have little nubs on them. Most of it grows in about 10 to 12 weeks. Um, they'll grow up to an inch a day. They can weigh up to 50 pounds on their head. Did you know reindeer shed and regrow their antlers every year? The antlers are like bony. They also have two coats, a winter coat and a summer coat. Oh, and girls rule. The females are dominant. They completely rule the herd. Reindeer usually have one calf a year, born in the springtime. If you can listen, you can hear the click in their feet. Um, that's a little tendon in their foot. Works. The reason for that is, is when one gets behind as far as if it has a calf or maybe a one gets hurt, you can hear that from miles away so they can catch up to the herd. So it's actually true in that song up on the rooftop, click, click, click. That's what they're talking about. Really? It's a tenon in their foot. And the number one question that gets asked by visitors, especially this time of year. The number one questions we get asked here at the farm, first one from the kid is, uh, where's Rudolph? Well, hi there. Now, Rudolph is definitely at the North Pole getting rested up at these times in November and December. We know Rudolph is the most famous reindeer of all, but on this farm, Angel is the star. And that's Angel uh, right over here. She's seven years old now. She's been a star since day one. She gets letters from all over the country. She gets a lot of mail at Christmas, a lot of Christmas cards from kids. They like their treats. And speaking of Christmas, the Aldrich family has a message for Santa. <laughs> These are some of Santa's backups. We are always ready. If he needs one, he can come and pick one up from us, that's for sure. These reindeer are ready for sure. Merry Christmas! 
Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Aaron, thanks so much. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, a story about giving thanks this holiday season and the school teacher for showing her students and now all of us the incredible power of gratitude. Let's get to tales from our good friend, Kate Snow. You've helped me get through the toughest time in my life when I didn't feel like there was anyone else I could fully open up to. You have taken care of me no matter what I've done or done to other people or even done to you. I am most grateful for you forever and eternally. You've showed me what love looks like and how to love. I hope she knows she's loved. At Los Alamos High School in New Mexico, psychology teacher Lynn Oviska has her students write letters of gratitude to special people in their lives. One of the things that we're going to focus on today is gratitude. For the past 10 years, she's made gratitude a cornerstone of her own lessons. We want you to feel connection to each other, right? It's been a hard couple years, you guys. Her students touched and moved by the powerful exercise she does every holiday season. You have been almost like a second mother to you me. You were the my first one to teach me how to drive. And it's changed my life. Without you changed my life. I'm so grateful for the both of you, but I don't think I say it enough. Lourdes Ledoux wrote a letter to her grandparents who helped her family during a challenging time. My teacher, Miss O, asked us to write gratitude letters, and the first people that came to mind were my grandparents. <laughs> they have just always been there through the fun parts, like vacations, and through sad parts like my dad being diagnosed with ALS and so it was just an automatic no questions asked that I was so grateful for them. I, I don't even truly remember writing the letter but I remember being excited to write it for them. Whenever I started writing it was just it all flowed out and I was just so excited to share it with them. Some students even thanked their teachers for the impact they made in their lives. Dear Mr. Lathrop, I want to express my gratitude for you. I'm grateful for your amazing attitude and enthusiasm that you bring to class every day. I think that you impacted my life in a major way by teaching me that we can have fun even if we're learning about U.S. history. Thank you for everything you do to change kids' lives. Jackson Boone, keep doing burrito runs. <laughs> thank you, Jackson. Yeah. I appreciate that. Dear Miss Abney, I wanted to thank you for being such an amazing teacher. Out of all my schooling, your class is definitely up there at the top. In fact, you're still the only teacher I've ever felt comfortable enough to ask for help from. So thank you. I know I was by no means a stellar student, but you really have changed my life. Oh, Aiden, can I give you a hug? Dear Miss Goldman, thank you for making such a big impact on me through your teaching. I always enjoy getting to go to your class, and it's one of my favorite parts of my school day and I enjoy coming to your class since I know I will leave with a little bit less stress in my life. Thank you for everything you do, and I hope you are rewarded with happiness for all the people in your life that, have made, that you have made happy. We are lucky to have you in our life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One teacher's lesson about gratitude, inspiring, and bringing the community closer together. This feels like something we all should be doing. Oh, I agree a million percent. Imagine. If we all, if the whole world just paused, that's it, and just thought about those people who have impacted them. I mean, high school kids can do it, you can do it, anybody can do it. Two such powerful words, thank you. Well, Kate, thanks to you for that report. What a wonderful lesson for all of us to take to heart. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. And just a program note, you can catch a new episode of Nightly News Kids Edition every Thursday on NBCNews.com and YouTube and streaming on the weekends on NBC News Now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long, and happy Hanukkah. <laughs>